What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Martian MMA Podcast. I am your host, and my name is John. And this week, we are back to analyze the UFC fight night going down tomorrow night, May 1st, 2021, headlined by Dominic Reyes versus Jiri Pachaska. This 12-fight card will take place from the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada, which means we are back in the small UFC cage. Just a quick recap of last week, we went 9 for 4 on predictions and profited 0.84 units on bet MMA tips. It should have been 10 and 3 on picks with a little more profit, but they robbed Stefan Sekulich of his decision, sadly. But overall, it was still a great week of bets, fights, amazing fights. It was great to have the crowd back in the audience. I hope you all enjoyed that event. We're back to no audience for this fight, though. Back to the apex in the small UFC cage. So make sure you factor that into your betting and make sure you factor it into your capping how the small cage will affect these fights because I definitely think it's possible that the small cage uh, can affect some of these matchups. But we're going to get into the first fight on the card in the featherweight division. We have Luke Sanders as the minus 145 favorite taking on Felipe Colares as the plus 125 underdog. This line seems a bit wide to me, mostly because I just do not trust Luke Sanders. He's a very flaky fighter. He tends to either lose round one and come back in round two, or win round one and start to fall apart in round two. That's exactly what we saw in his last fight against Nate Maness. He was really outstriking Nate Maness badly for the first six or seven minutes of that fight, but then just started getting really reckless in the pocket, started getting in bad exchanges, got rocked with a punch, got taken down, and got choked out in round two. So it seems like Sanders doesn't really have a full 15 minutes worth of cardio. He seems to have a questionable chin at times, and he also can be taken down and submitted. We saw that in the Hani Yaya fight recently. And Felipe Colares is a durable, tough guy. He's aggressive. He's going to come forward, shoot takedowns. He's a very capable offensive grappler. We saw that in the Domingo Pilarte fight. He outgrappled Pilarte for most of that fight. And I think Col- Colares is capable of surviving the striking here, getting inside on Sanders, getting some takedowns, and outgrappling Sanders here. And I think that's how the fight goes. I think. Kolaris crashes the pocket with his body kicks, is going to get takedowns, might even find a submission somewhere along the lines, but I'm not too impressed with Kolaris' top game, but I do think he's going to have the jiu-jitsu, the takedowns to be able to outgrapple Sanders, especially in rounds two and three here. I've been pretty impressed with Kolaris' cardio as well, so Kolaris by decision via outgrappling is the pick, and the plus 125, I do think there is value. I would definitely not lay any chalk on Luke Sanders in this spot. The next fight takes place in the middleweight division. We have Andre Michidis as the minus 208 favorite taking on KB Bueller as the plus 178 underdog. This line seems pretty accurate to me. Actually, Bueller has been the one getting bet the past few days. I think Michidis was in the minus 250 range for a while, but now you're seeing some people come back on Bueller. Personally, I don't have much faith in Bueller, mostly because there's just a lack of footage of him available. Very few of his pre UFC fights are available online, and his UFC debut was a short notice fight against Tom Breeze. He got outboxed badly in that fight, got dropped with the jab, and got finished pretty quickly in round one there. So that wasn't a good sign from Bueller, but I don't think he's going to look quite as bad here against Michidis, mostly because. I'm just not overly convinced that Michidis is a great fighter at this point. He does seem like the better fighter with a deeper skill arsenal. He seems a little bit better on the feet, more durable on the feet. He also can hit takedowns and keep top position. And in the few fights that of Bueller that we've seen, we have seen him get taken down and struggle with that takedown defense. So I likely think that Michidis wins this fight however he wants to. He probably can outstrike Bueller on the feet, but I expect it to be fairly close on the feet. And Michidis is probably going to look to hit takedowns to take the easiest path to victory here. And Michidis dropping down to this new weight class, I think it's a good move for him. He's training at a good gym, and I think he's going to win this fight pretty comfortably. I actually like the Michidis submission prop here, a plus 1,400. I do think there's a good chance that Michidis shoots takedowns here, and I think the submission could look live. So plus 1,400, I think that's worth a small stab. But overall, let's go with a decision pick to get it done. I could see... All three outcomes happening for Michidis here, honestly, but I'm going to go with decision just to be safe. Uh, Michidis' decision is the pick. Where the line is at now, I guess there could be some value on Michidis, but there's still a lot of questions around both these guys. I'm not really comfortable betting this fight with how many unknowns there are about these two guys. So Michidis' decision is the bet. I mean, excuse me, is the pick. In terms of bets, not much I have confidence in, but I like a stab on that Michidis submission prop. The next fight takes place in the women's strawweight division. We have Loma Lookbunmi as the minus 400 favorite, taking on Sam Hughes as the plus 300 underdog. I think this line is very accurate. I do cap Loma Lookbunmi around 80% in this matchup, and I actually already have a bet tracked on her in this fight. 
I have four units on a minus 260 betting line available on FanDuel Sportsbook a few weeks ago. I tweeted about this. I tracked this bet a few weeks ago. I really like this spot for Loma Look with me. This is a pretty simple matchup to break down. If the fight stays standing, I think it's pretty much physically impossible for Sam Hughes to win. Loma is just miles better as a striker, and we've only really seen Loma struggle with the striking of Angela Hill, and I'm just not ready to put Sam Hughes' striking anywhere near the level of Angela Hill. So if it stays standing, Loma should win in distance and in the clinch especially. She's a tremendous clinch fighter, and Sam Hughes really struggled with the clinch attacks of Tisha Torres. So if Sam Hughes wants to win this fight, she's going to have to hit takedowns and she's likely going to have to hit takedowns in multiple rounds because I haven't seen enough impressive submission ability from Hughes to think she's going to quickly submit Loma. Loma's not a terrible defensive grappler either, so she's not going to get completely wiped out on the mat and submitted. I think if Hughes wants to win, she's going to have to hit takedowns in two out of three rounds and outgrapple Loma to win the rounds. And I've seen good enough takedown defense from Loma Lookbunmi, especially in her last fight against Jin Yu Fry, who I consider to be a better fighter and grappler than Sam Hughes. We saw Loma stuff takedowns get off of her back in that fight and outstrike Fry to a decisive decision there. And I just don't think that Sam Hughes is that good of a fighter. So I think Loma Lukbunmi stuffs any takedowns, avoids getting out grappled, and should win the striking very, very comfortably here. And I think Loma honestly will justify her price tag as minus 400. Where the price is at now, it has gotten to dog or pass territory. I wouldn't advise putting Loma and parlays or betting her anymore at this price, but the early price, if you're able to get in, like I tracked it, I have four units on Loma at minus 260, and that should cash pretty easy here. I'm picking Loma by decision. The next fight takes place in the featherweight division. We have Kai Kamaka as the minus 143 favorite, taking on TJ Brown as the plus 123 underdog. This line seems pretty accurate to me. I do agree with Kamaka being the slight favorite here. In the striking, I do give Kamaka a pretty decent advantage. He has the much more layered offense, while Brown just kind of marches forward and doesn't have the best defense. We have seen him dropped and hurt a few times with punches. Brown is really a wrestler who's looking to get the fight to the floor, and he does have good takedown ability, but I don't really trust his top position too much. I don't think he has the greatest jiu-jitsu skill, and we saw that in his UFC debut against Jordan Griffin when he was winning that fight pretty handily with his wrestling, but managed to get submitted from bottom position there with the guillotine, so that was not a good look from Brown. I also have some concerns over Kamaka stemming from his cardio. I think it's pretty safe to say that he does not have good cardio. He does not have a full 15 minutes worth of gas. We saw that in the Michael Stack fight where he won two out of three rounds of that fight. In the Tony Kelly fight, he won the first half of that fight before slowing down badly in the second half. And in the Jonathan Pierce fight, he was outstriking Pierce for the first few minutes of that fight, but started to get taken down, started to slow down very heavily in that fight, and eventually got finished in round two. He was just completely gassed out for that fight, but I do think that fight was on short notice. Hopefully, Kamaka has been working on his conditioning a little bit. And we actually have seen Kamaka stuff takedowns. We've seen him escape bottom position. He actually comes from a wrestling background himself. So I think that he will be able to stuff some takedowns of Brown. He'll be able to stand up from those takedowns. And I think Kamaka is the better striker. So I am going to be picking Kamaka to win this fight via decision. But I'm not extremely confident because of that cardio issue. But as long as Kamaka comes in here with his cardio issue fixed or improved a little bit, I think he should have the takedown defense to avoid the takedowns of Brown, and he should be the better striker to outstrike Brown to a decision. So the pick is going to be Kakamaka here. In terms of best for this fight, I think both guys have some concerns and some liabilities, and I'm not really comfortable betting on either guy at this stage of their career, but this should be a really fun fight. I do think that Kamaka is around 60% here. The line is accurate, so... Take that for what you will and make your own bets, but I think this is kind of a risky fight to bet, but it should be a fun one to watch. The next fight takes place from the featherweight division. We have Gabriel Benitez as the minus 195 favorite, taking on Jonathan Pierce as the plus 170 underdog. One thing to note about this fight is the weigh-ins just ended and Benitez did miss weight by 4.5 pounds, which is definitely not a good look for Benitez. Although I don't think it's an awful sign because when a fighter misses weight by that much, it likely means they stopped cutting weight, they gave up pretty early. When they miss weight by a pound, a half a pound, that means they really tried to make the weight, they sucked down their bodies to the last point they can, and they still couldn't make the weight. So I prefer small weight misses as to large weight misses. I think the large weight misses actually kind of favor the heavy fighter here. But with that being said, I kind of like the underdog Jonathan Pierce in this fight from a betting perspective. I don't think the line should be this wide. I think that Benitez should be a slight favorite here, but minus 200 is getting a little out of control. Benitez should be the better striker of the two. He's a southpaw. He's got that nice southpaw striking. He's got great kicks, 
great boxing skill as well. I think it'll be competitive on the feet, but I do expect Benitez to win the striking exchanges, especially in round one. But I don't really trust Benitez's striking output over the full 15 minutes. We haven't really seen him tested very much in his recent fights. And speaking of Benitez's recent fights, he is coming off of a round one knockout over Justin James at lightweight, and I think that fight could be influencing this line a little bit. Benitez looked great there, but James is a really bad fighter that was up a weight class. Benitez is having to cut more weight. It's actually his first time cutting weight down to 145 in a long time, and that could be why he missed the weight here. So I think the fact that this fight is at featherweight actually favors Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Pierce here. Pierce is a capable striker who will compete on the feet here, but I think he's likely going to be looking to take this fight to the floor. He does have some solid wrestling, some good top position, and Gabriel Benitez does not have the best takedown defense. We've seen him taken down a lot by opponents like Barzola. He does have good get-ups. He's hard to hold down. He's good at getting back up to his feet, but I think that Pierce has a good chance at hitting takedowns here, and I think Pierce should have a cardio advantage in rounds two and three as well. So I like Pierce in this matchup. I think he might have a rough round one, maybe gets outstruck. He might even get knocked out in round one, but I think if he makes it out of round one, Benitez is going to start to slow down. Pierce is going to get his wrestling game plan implemented a little bit more, and I think he has the cardio advantage and the grappling advantage in rounds two and three here. So I'm going to be picking Jonathan Pierce to win this fight via either late finish or a decision. I'm going to go with decision as the official pick, 29-28 decision for JSP here, and I do have a bet tracked on him at plus 170. I think the time to bet Pierce is now because he was about plus 180 earlier in the morning, but after Benitez missed weight by that big margin, people have started to bet Pierce. So I think the time to get in on Pierce is now if you want so. I have 0.75 units on his money line. I'm not extremely confident in this one, but I do think he is the value side, and I do think the fight will look more competitive than minus 200 plus 170. So I'm fine with a small bet on Jonathan Pierce here, and I'm actually picking him to pull off the upset victory by decision. The next fight takes place in the women's strawweight division. We have Luana Pinero as the minus 157 favorite, taking on Random Marcos as the plus 137 underdog. We got Pinero making her UFC debut here, and this woman has some pretty limited tape, fought mostly really low-level opponents, and finished most of them in round one. She actually doesn't have any victories outside of round one, which is a huge red flag. I highly doubt Pinero is going to come in here and finish Marcos in round one. I haven't seen enough impressive boxing or takedown and jiu-jitsu ability for Pinero to expect her to do that. So this fight is probably going to get into rounds two and three where Pinero is untested. Marcos has much more experience, likely the better cardio. And honestly, I think that Marcos is probably the better grappler as well. We've seen some limited takedowns in top position from Pinero, but her opponents have been so bad that there's really no way to tell how good of a grappler she is. But I'm willing to bet that Marcos is the better grappler. She's going to have the better cardio. And I honestly think that Marcos could even be the better striker as well because Pinero has just been out striking bums, honestly, to, not to be disrespectful. But none of her opponents are any good, and Pinero has not beaten a single good opponent in MMA. So I'm down to fade Pinero all day long, fade the contender series fighter all day long it's not like marcos is an extremely consistent fighter who is gonna fight for your money every single time out she does have kind of on and off performances but i do think that she is worth a small bet at this price at plus money and honestly just don't overthink it just put a small bet on marcos not a big bet i wouldn't go more than one and a half two units at most on marcos because as i mentioned she is kind of hot and cold as a fighter but you got an inexperienced UFC debutante coming off the contender series against an experienced UFC veteran in Marcos. I'm down to take the veteran all day for a small bet, and I'm picking Marcos to win this one via decision. The next fight takes place in the women's flyweight division. We have Poliana Botello as the minus 270 favorite, taking on Luana Carolina as the plus 230 underdog. Honestly, I think Carolina is a pretty awful fighter. She's a very basic striker with some straight punches. She keeps her head on a center line, and she just eats strikes nonstop. And she also can be taken down and submitted pretty easily as well. I don't think she has much grappling skill at all. So Carolina is a pretty bad fighter. Botello is decent, I'd say. She's the more skilled fighter. She's got some decent kicks in the feet. She has finished a few opponents with her body kicks. And she is capable of hitting takedowns and out grappling opponents, submitting opponents as well. So I think this should be pretty one-way traffic for Botello. I'm not really rushing to bet her at minus 270, but I do have a small bet on the inside of the distance for Botello here. I just think that Botello is levels above, and if she really puts her MMA skill together, she probably finds a finish on Carolina. I think Botello could probably hurt her with a body shot and finish her in the striking, or probably can take her down and submit her with a rear naked choke as well. So I think Botello could finish on the feet or on the ground here, and I like her inside the distance line for a small bet. 
The pick is going to be Botello round 2 TKO. The next fight takes place in the Bantamweight division. We have Marab Davalashvili as the minus 255 favorite taking on Cody Stamen as the plus 215 underdog. This line seems a bit wide to me. Cody Stamen is a very capable fighter. He's capable of stuffing takedowns, hitting offensive takedowns. He's a great wrestler. He also is a pretty solid boxer as well. He doesn't have the highest output. He doesn't really hurt opponents with his punches or go for submissions. He actually doesn't have a single finish in the UFC. All of his wins are by decision. And the same goes for Marab, honestly. He has never finished a fight via finish in the UFC. So it's very likely this fight goes to decision. It's pretty hard to pick against Marab because he's so aggressive, so tenacious. He's going to shoot 10 takedowns a fight. He's going to attempt hundreds of strikes a fight. And he's just going to be constantly aggressive and in your face. And the judges like his style. It's a good style for winning rounds. And I think that Cody Stamen is likely going to have a hard time winning these rounds considering just how active Marab's going to be. But I do think that Cody Stamen has the takedown defense to stuff takedowns in Marab. I think he has the get-ups to get back off of his feet after he gets taken down. And I think he has the boxing skill to compete in the distance striking here. So I think this fight is just going to be competitive wherever it goes. I really don't expect Marab to take down and control Stamen for very long. He might get some riding time against the fence, but he's not that takedown and top position type of guy. This fight is going to be against the cage. It's going to be grindy. And I think when these guys are breaking off from the clinch, I think we're going to see Stamen have a little bit of a boxing advantage. And if Stamen can keep this fight a distance and get his boxing going, start landing some punches on Marab, I think he has a decent chance to pull off the upset here. So I think it's a dog or pass situation. I think a small bet on Cody Stamen is warranted here. This is a very tough matchup for Marab. And I think that Cody Stamen has the defensive grappling to knock it out grappled here. He has the offensive boxing to make this fight real competitive. So I like the Cody Stamen money line for a small bet. Cody Stamen by uh, decision of plus 500 over on FanDuel is worth a, a bet as well. So I like Cody Stamen here for a bet. But in terms of how pure pick goes, I'm going to go with Murad by decision. As I mentioned, it's hard to pick against the guy at times because he puts up so much output and he's so aggressive. So I'm going to pick Murad via close decision here, but I hope... Cody Stamen pulls off the upset. The next fight takes place in the middleweight division. We have Sean Strickland, who is the minus 270 favorite, taking on Christoph Jocko, who is the plus 230 underdog. This line seems a bit wide to me. I don't think that Jocko should be this much of an underdog. This is probably Strickland's toughest test to date at middleweight. He's only had two fights at middleweight, and they've both been pretty favorable matchups. Jack Marshman, who he outboxed for 15 minutes straight, and Brendan Allen, who we outboxed for six or seven minutes before finishing him with punches in round two. So Strickland's look good. His boxing looks sharp. He's very hard to take down. But I just think that Christoph Jocko will be there to compete at all phases here. I do expect Strickland to win the striking here. I think he's got the more consistent output. He's got the more accurate and powerful punches. And I just like his boxing technique a lot better. But Jocko is awkward on the feet. He's going to be shooting takedowns. He's going to be pushing you against the cage. And I do think that Strickland has the takedown defense to stuff the shots of Jocko, but I just envision this fight being kind of a close decision. Jocko's best chance of winning the fight is likely via a close decision. He's not the type of fighter to win fights emphatically, while Strickland has a much better chance to really win this fight convincingly. But at minus 270, I do not think there's any value left on Strickland. I think that the value is on Jocko here. If you like Jocko, maybe go a small bet on Jocko by decision because I do think that is his most likely way of winning by a wide margin. So the line is a little bit wide, but I'm still going to pick Strickland by decision here. And looking over at FanDuel, I do see Strickland by decision at plus 160. I think that does have some value on there, so I might add a bet on that at some point. The next fight takes place in the light heavyweight division. We have Ian Kudaleba as the minus 143 favorite, taking on Justin Jacoby as the plus 123 underdog. I actually think that the wrong guy is favored here. I actually think Jacoby should be the slight favorite. Even though he is coming in on short notice, I think this is a good matchup for Jacoby. I think that if Kudaleba wants to win, he's likely going to have to have a lot of round one success, possibly finish Jacoby in round one, because I just do not trust the cardio of Kudaleba in rounds two and three. He usually comes out very aggressive and starts to slow down heavily by rounds two and three. In the striking here, I do think it should be competitive because Kudaleba is a decent striker who's got some good power. But in terms of striking skill and technique, I think that Jacoby is the much better striker. He's got good leg kicks, good straight punches, good knees from the clinch. 
I think Jacoby's going to outstrike Kudaleba from a very early point in this fight. I think he's going to be hitting that leg with leg kicks. He's going to be popping jabs in his face. And I think that Kudaleba is going to look to hit takedowns here. But I've seen pretty good takedown defense from Jacoby. Not the greatest takedown defense, but it's not like Kudaleba is the greatest wrestler either. So I think that Jacoby should have the takedown defense to stuff any takedowns. And he should be the better striker and have the better cardio, even though he's coming in on short notice here. Round one is going to be close. But I think that Jacoby is going to survive that early storm from Kudaleba, be the fresher fighter in rounds two and three, and outstrike Kudaleba pretty badly in those later rounds. Jacoby isn't the biggest hitter. We've actually seen two fights of his recently where he was beating the guys really badly, uh, East and Flores, those fights, and he still wasn't able to finish those guys, and they did make it to a decision. So I think this fight does have a good chance to make it to a decision. I think that's at plus 280 right now. The Jacoby round three decision prop is at plus 300 or something. So there's a lot of interesting props here. I think this fight has a good chance to go to decision, and I think that the wrong guy is favored here. So I will end up with a bet on Dustin Jacoby. And I'm picking him to win here by decision. The next fight takes place in the featherweight division. We have Giga Chikadze as the minus 172 favorite taking on Cub Swanson as the plus 147 underdog. This is a pretty similar price to Cub Swanson's last fight. I did bet on Cub in his last fight against Daniel Pineda. It was a great knockout performance from him. But I don't really have as much faith this time around because the price is about the same. But the fighter on the other side is a much better fighter. I do think that Giga Chikadze is a better fighter than Pineda. He's a much better striker. He's much better suited to go the full 15 minutes than Pineda was. Cub also had a good amount of trouble in that fight. He was coming off the knee surgery going into that one. And he was not checking leg kicks. He was getting his lead leg lit up with leg kicks. And it looked like his leg was pretty compromised. But Pineda started to gas out luckily pretty early on in that fight. And Cub was able to outbox him to get that knockout in round two. In the striking of this matchup, the striking exchanges should be close. Cub is still a very good boxer, and Giga is not some next level striker. I mean, he is a good striker coming from a kickboxing background, but it's not like it's unfathomable to imagine him being outstruck. But if Cub wants to win this fight in the easiest way possible, he's going to look to hit takedowns. Cub does from, come from a judo background. He does have some nice clinch takedowns. And we have seen Giga look pretty bad off of his back, especially in the Austin Springer fight on the Contender Series where he was choked out in round three of that fight. So I'm not saying it's impossible for Cub to win without getting takedowns. He could win in the striking, but the easiest path to victory is going to be mixing in that judo game, getting those takedowns, and putting Giga on his back at certain times in this fight. If the fight stays standing for 15 minutes, I do expect Giga Chikadze to win. I think he's the better kickboxer. He's much faster. He has good 15 minutes worth of cardio, and I think he could be the more durable of the two as well. I just did not like the way Cub Swanson's leg was looking in that fight against Pineda. I think that a more skilled striker like Chikadze is going to be giving him trouble, and I just don't really trust Cub Swanson at this point to win the striking here. So if Cub wants to win, he's going to have to mix in takedowns. He's going to have to put Giga on his back for certain periods of time. But I don't have enough faith in that to go out and pick him to do so. I will be cheering for Cub Swanson in this fight. He's a legend of the MMA game. But I'm not going to be picking him to win this fight. I'm going to be picking Giga Chikadze to win this fight via decision. In terms of bets for this one, I do think it is dog or pass in the money line. I'm not confident enough in Giga to recommend laying that minus 170, minus 180. I do think he wins the fight, but I'm not confident enough to lay that chalk. I think the value is on the dog, the veteran here, Cub Swanson. And uh, honestly, I wouldn't be mad if Cub pulled off the upset, but I'm picking Giga decision. The next fight is the main event of the card and takes place in the light heavyweight division. We have Jiri Prochaska as the minus 128 favorite taking on Dominic Reyes as the plus 108 underdog. I think this line is pretty accurate, but make no mistake, this is a very hard fight to predict, hard fight to cap. I think there's a good chance that these guys just swing to the death in rounds 1 and 2. We could see a knockout on either end. An early round 1 or round 2 knockout would not surprise me from either guy. The way Jiri just rushes at you aggressively, he doesn't have the greatest defense, kind of eats punches on his way in, but if he can close the distance, get in the pocket, the guy has power, he's got power in his hands and his kicks, he's got a very good kicking game. Most of the times the Jiri has struggled in MMA has been getting taken down by wrestlers who can keep top position on him. He doesn't have great takedown defense. He doesn't have great ability to get up off of his back. But Dominic Reyes is not much of a wrestler. I do not expect Reyes to hit takedowns here. I just don't think Reyes has enough wrestling skill to take down and hold down Jiri. 
So this fight should take place in the feet. And Jiri's going to be coming forward like a madman, throwing volume, being aggressive, looking to land that knockout blow. And I do think that Jiri eventually closes the distance and finds the chin of Dom Reyes for the knockout here. But it also wouldn't surprise me if Reyes clips him with a counter shot on the way in and puts Jiri out cold here. So... I like the fight does not start round three here. I just think that Jiri is going to come out so aggressive. These guys are going to be trading punches early. That even if the bet doesn't hit, it's minus 115. I think in the first 10 minutes, that bet is going to be looking pretty good. And if the bet loses, it's going to be more of like, how did these guys survive those shots instead of, you know, a real bad loss. So I like the bet does not start round three. I think these guys are going to swing to the death in rounds one and two. And I'm going to be picking Jiri to win the fight, even though he's probably not the more skilled fighter. Dominic Reyes probably has more striking skills, probably the cleaner striker of the two. I trust the aggression and the power and just the athleticism of Jiri Prochaska to get that round one knockout. I think he's going to pressure. I think he's going to land some punches. And I think he's going to put Dom Reyes out. I'm going to go with round one. So Jiri, round one knockout is the pick. I wouldn't be too confident in the money line side here. I don't think you should be betting more than one or two units on either money line side because... As I mentioned, this is pretty close to 50-50. Both of these guys could knock each other out. I do give a slight advantage to Jiri, but I am far from confident in the fact that he is going to win. I am pretty confident in these guys are going to come at each other, swing in round one and two, and there's a great chance that we see one of these guys get knocked out. So I like my does not start round three bed here to cover both sides, and I'm picking Jiri round one knockout. So that is going to do it for this podcast. We analyzed, predicted, and discussed the betting odds for all 12 UFC fights going down tomorrow night. Make sure you follow me on BetMMA so you can see all my tracked official bets. I'm on a pretty good streak. I think I'm 5-1 and one in the past 6 events on BetMMA. Maybe 3 or 4 winning events in a row. So we're on a good streak in BetMMA. Make sure you track your, uh, your tail in my track bets. And hope you all enjoy the fights and win some bets this weekend. I'll see you all before the next UFC event next week. Peace. Thank you.